there's so much going on right now, you just have to keep up with it. We are, as always, looking for something that will be hysterical in the West in the coming days. And this thread is just one of those. Pictured as a US warship, something from the USS Dwight Eisenhower aircraft carrier order that entered the Persian Gulf on November 26. The funniest thing about this image is that it is a still from a video of an Iranian drone. That one was quite unobstructed by a heavily guarded air group of American warships, which either didn't see his presence or didn't dare to shoot down the drones. There were at least three of them. It was shot from a variety of angles. The funny thing is that drones are easily used to plan attacks on ships, and Iran has already announced that it has anti-ship hypersonics, and if anything, the Persians will use them without a sniffle. The video was taken right in the Strait of Hormuz. But what is much funnier here is that the entire Persian Gulf is in range of Iranian missiles, in case of what happens neither aircraft carrier nor any other US warship will leave the Gulf. Tigran in general has gone rogue in recent days, spewing statements one worse than the other, all against America and its allies. It turns out that not only did they brazenly and almost openly remove the warrant, they also forced the US Navy to land all helicopters on the deck of their ships when passing through the Strait of Hormuz. To quote one of the news stories, U.S. Central Command confirmed on Monday that a U.S. strike group led by the aircraft carrier Eisenhower has passed through the Strait of Orma in Persian Gulf waters. CENTCOM added that the strike group will conduct patrols to ensure freedom of navigation on key international waterways, as well as support CENTCOM's requirements throughout the region. End quote. I wonder how the Americans will support CENTCOM's claims across the region, given the dozens of attacks on U.S. military bases just across the region. So far, no one has touched bases in Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Oman. But that's just for now, for the partisans do not sleep and are plotting new plots against the elves. And there are more and more guerrillas in the Middle East. Praise be to Sekel. It would seem, the Persians have always been scumbags about the US, but here the degree of scumbaggery is off the charts. If Iran demands that the helicopters be landed and America complies, it gives Tehran the illusion of omnipotence and impunity. Well, how else can one explain the insolence of the IRGC? which not only sends drones but also controls the passage of an aircraft carrier strike group near its shores with its warships. Is that even chutzpah, or does this chutzpah have grounds for chutzpah? As it turns out, there are enough reasons, even more than enough. To quote another news item, Iran has made significant technological breakthroughs in its defense industry, enabling it to detect, target and intercept the latest US-made F-35 aspirators, Mayor, head of the Army's Air Defense Self-Support Research Organization, told the Mayor News Agency. According to General Samad Aga Mohammadi, the global race to develop advanced technical means used in air attack is colliding with air defense, which is crucial to defend against growing threats. The Iranian Armed Forces and the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps are constantly researching and observing the defense developments of countries around the world in order to modernize the country's systems to meet any threats. Oh, how did that happen? It's very simple. When Iran purchased the first batch of Yak-130 airplanes from Russia last September, no one in the West even scratched their heads. It's a lightweight combat trainer for Iranian pilots. Yes, it can be used as some sort of strike vehicle, but its combat capabilities are quite small. You sneeze on a lightweight, it blows off the strata. The point is different, Yak-130 is a combat trainer, which allows you to practice piloting skills on it a whole bunch of other combat vehicles from Su-27 and MiG-29 to Su-35 and Su-57. That is, until generations 4 plus, 5, and that's a whole different Kalinkor. If the Persians get cars like that in the region, a lot of people are going to be in a lot of trouble. Looks like the time to get bad is right around the corner. To quote another news item, in a statement to the Tasneem News Agency, Iran's Deputy Defense Minister, Brigadier General Mahdi Farahi, Said Iran has finalized plans to incorporate Russian warplanes into the country's armed forces. The final plan includes deployment of Su-35 fighter jets, Mi-28 attack helicopters and Yak-130 jet trainer aircraft. General Farahi emphasized that the advanced aircraft will soon be available to Iran and the necessary processes are underway to integrate them into the combat units of Iran's armed forces. The move underscores Iran's commitment to improving its military capabilities and readiness. Notably, Iran boasts the most extensive fleet of military helicopters in the region, both in terms of numbers and capabilities. Farahai highlighted the ongoing effort to upgrade the capabilities of these helicopters through various projects. Notably, Iran has not acquired new fighters in recent years, with the exception of a few Russian MiG-29 Fulcrum fighters acquired in the 1990s. End of news story.
What's interesting is that ours are as silent as fish against ice, but Mahdi and Farahi are not the kind of people who will make sound waves for no reason. The Persians are very much like us in this respect, you can't pull words out with a pincer, but once they start scaring you, you can't stop. Besides, they have plenty of experience in countering the American and any Western fleet, and most importantly, they are not shy about taking Americans prisoner. And they take them in a showy manner, with the Marines snotting all over the world, kneeling under the gun sights of IRGC fighters, and nothing, it worked. More than once. The dreaded retribution never came, and the negotiations for release were downright humiliating for Washington. But the topic now is about something else. The Su-35, Mi-28 and the S-400 air defense system already represent a very formidable force for this theater of anticipated hostilities. And this is a good time to remind you that UN sanctions on arms sales to Iran have already expired. All restrictions imposed by Security Council Resolution No. 2231 ended on October 18th of this year. Not even a month and a half later, Tehran and Moscow are getting closer and closer. By the way, any attempts to extend Resolution 2231 were met with vetoes from Russia and China. In this regard, Moscow and Beijing have their own resonances, and they do not prevent each other from making money together with the Persians. Not only that, the end of Resolution 2231 gives Iran back control over a number of assets previously frozen in Western banks, so the Persians have something to pay back their friends. The YAK-130 was the first swallow. News about the possibility of supplying S-400 to Iran. The West also swallowed without a second thought. 4. The news was back in late summer, and Resolution 2231 was in force there, and Russia, as a trustworthy country in terms of compliance with international law, had no right to supply S-400s left and right. But then October came, and everyone immediately wondered if those words were just another white noise, or if there was really something behind them. The news of the delivery of the Su-35 puts an end to this issue. Also, the trade turnover between Russia and Iran is breaking all past records. To quote the news story, Cooperation between Iran and Russia in the defense sector has undergone significant changes as the two countries have signed major agreements to strengthen economic, trade, energy and military cooperation. Back in February, Russian ambassador to Tehran Alexei Dadov told reporters that trade relations between Russia and Iran reached a record $4.5 billion in 2022, up 15% from a year earlier. End of news story. Wow, who knew? By the way, at the end of the 23rd year, this record can be beaten twice more. The Russians are slow to harness, but the Persians are fast to ride. If there's anything to it, and judging by the latest news, there's plenty to go around. One more piece of news. Iran and Russia have also opted to use national currencies to improve their economic relations. According to Nauer News, Iranian ambassador to Russia Qasem Jalali said, up to 60% of trade between Russia and Iran is carried out in the two countries' national currencies, the ruble and the real. But we have to reduce the 40% dollar share. Reducing the use of the US dollar in bilateral trade, the ambassador said, would reduce the dollar's influence on the Russia-Iran economic partnership. It's a flaw. The dollar has already gone below 20% in the volume of Russia's total foreign trade. But the comrades in Chelms are obviously late. They're forgiven, though. They've developed such a sniff for parallel imports over 40 years of sanctions that you'd be envious. And we got hit in all areas at once. We had to find a solution right on the run. In addition, Tehran has lived in the dollar space for almost the entire period of sanctions. And he slowly comes to a quiet end. Now the movement of some countries in the global south is tearless. Remember a week ago when Argentina said it would take a chainsaw and immediately shred ties with Russia and China? And will immediately refuse to retreat to the BRICS? And it should happen as early as January 2004. Now, nobody's taking or crumbling anything anymore. Argentina's new foreign minister has already clarified that Senor President was just overjoyed. But no one in Buenos Aires is even thinking of severing ties, much less abandoning BRICS. There are no bad ones, and even Argentina's central bank has changed its mind about cracking down. The situation in Africa is even funnier. Remember a country like Nigeria, who at one time shot down a coalition to march on Niger after a coup d'etat and how they kicked the French out of there. Now, in Nigeria too, nobody is going anywhere anymore. The trek to Niger ended before it began. And just the other day, the Nigerian authorities told the world that they need to go to BRICS too. Urgent, urgent, for the line is already too long without them. Amid the news from Argentina and Nigeria, the Iranian news looks too bland and combed over. But in terms of consequences, they'll give Latin America and Africa a head start.